with the Cockeyed Homestead. Guess what we're doing today? We got strawberries. Hold on, let me get these cleaned up and I'll be right back with you. As you can see here, by mashing it with the potato masher, we've gotten quite a bit, and, and the addition of the water, we've gotten quite a bit of the pulp mashed down to nothing much. There are a few big chunks in here to give you a mouthful of strawberry in every bite. So, I'm just going to bring this to a boil now. I did add my four cups of water to this to bring the total amount up to about seven cups of strawberry uh, juice and pulp. And it's come up to a boil and I can't stir it down. I don't know whether you can see or not, but there's constantly bubbles in there. Now's the time to add our pectin. The instructions say to add the pectin with a quarter cup of sugar. So that's what I'm going to do. In goes the pectin and the sugar. We'll give it a good stir. Wait for it to come up to a boil and then start my timer for a minute. Once that's done, I'll add probably half a teaspoon of water to this to get the foaming down and then I'll ladle in it into my hot jars. I did end up skimming about a quarter cup of the foam off of this. Now my jars are hot. I've just pulled them out of my oven. We're going to fill the jars about a quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch from the top. I've got my lids sitting in hot water. I bought one of those fancy deep scoop canning ladles and I'll be darned if I know what Mel did with it. As always, you want to wipe the jars, grab yourself a hot lid, and of course, because I'm on camera, they want to stick together. And so I'm reaching my fingers into this hot water. You would think, being a chef, that I would have grown asbestos on my fingertips, but I haven't. But you put the lids on. And one reason why, for me, to wipe the rims real good is for decades now I haven't water bathed my jam and jellies after they have been capped what I do is I screw the lid down tight as so turn it upside down in about an hour, I can flip it right side up again, and the jar will be sealed. Do as I do, or don't do what I do, or as I say, but this has always worked for me. There she is, arguing with lids. 
Well, it's fun to do this one-handed with hot jars, hot filled jars. You're laughing at me, but I'm going to make you do this because you need more practice. But I've almost got these done. Mel also had these cute jars down in the cupboard. They were my mom's marmalade jars and stuff. And I'm going to use them, and I'll put them directly in the freezer because these one-time use lids, they won't ever seal back. But I can have some strawberry jam on my pancakes in the morning. In the winter. Well, in the winter, too. I mean... <laughs> This is just the beginning of the strawberry harvest. Ow, that's burning hot. Yep. Thank you. Flip it upside down. So much for helping. Whoa. Mm -hmm. This is why I was having problems since holding it in my arm and cinching the lid down. God. It's hot. Can't stand the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> what? The pan up on the back of the stove. Well, I have to I do great. have to do something. It's not like I can hold it and tilt it. Okay, now for our strawberry experiment. This has been at a low simmer since I started this process. And I'm just draining it through a sieve. But it looks like strawberry syrup to me. Or strawberry flavored water. What I may do is uh, boil it down some more. But it's a pretty red color. Boil it down some more and then get it a little thicker. Let's have a taste. Oh, wow. I knew those scraps were good for something. This can still go in the compost pile. But now I got strawberry honey syrup for my tea. Y'all have a blessed day.